Welcome to Sugar and Ink, a podcast about living the plus side of life. Hi, I'm Sugar from Sugarcoated. And I'm Samara. (laughs) From nowhere. From nowhere. From Uh, Samara. And you're listening to the Sugar and Ink podcast. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for being here. Um, I was way off in the last episode. It was episode six, so welcome back to episode seven smashing it i know you you were right i was wrong <laughs> thank you thank you please uh, see, that's Can what i love about women. That? just be like i was right you were wrong i was yeah. right <laughs> oh just make a gif of it yeah uh, <laughs> my husband's gonna love that gif <laughs> he'll spend all his time doing that okay so in today's episode and this is something that's come up for both of us lately both in these episodes and me on the blog and for what Samara is doing with the current rollout of the CEO sleep out I guess you're pretty close with that yeah yeah Uh, yeah. we're going to talk about social media planning so we're not going to talk about how you schedule it or you know any of that actually delivering it side of things but we're talking about the planning side so what goes into Samara doing what she does uh, what I do a lot one-on-one with people in just creating a plan for you know which social media you're going to be on and how you're going to deliver content there Does that sound right perfect here we go do you like my new corner yeah look at me go. I'm loving this I think I'm it's loving super like cute. yeah I'm, I'm loving to... this one this one's cute. Isn't it cute? It came out yeah. of the Collective Hub magazine. Yeah, I that's just a framed good one. it. Did you hear they're shutting Collective Hub? Don't get me started. I know, because we're going for a shorter episode. This but time. I had all the feels. I feel like we could talk we could definitely talk about the one because I had all the feels about her video. Did you no, watch Lisa like, Messages? I should watch, watch that. Watch that and let's do an episode because yes. you will have all the feels. It was really good. Okay. Right on. Yeah. It'll be like a month later by the time you get it, but it'll be fine. Whatever. Yeah. So social media planning. So I'm going to get you to kick this off because obviously Ooh. with what you guys do, um, if you guys haven't seen the episode or heard the episode about Samara's job, she works for St. Vincent de Paul and oversees their Facebook and uh, nationally. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. all the state managers report to her with their stuff and then it all goes out from there. So I think it would be fascinating to know how you guys like oversee the planning of all of mm-hmm. that. So tell us about that. All right. So we we plan our content two weeks ahead um, yeah. so that we have two weeks where stuff is scheduled in and going and then we use that two weeks to then start collecting stuff for the next fortnight. Okay. Um, we did do it monthly at one stage there, but it was quite hard for the states to actually bring together a month's worth of content yes. in one go. So we moved down to fortnightly. So I think that for – for planning your content, it's good to think about how often you think you might need to do that. So we started with a month and had to move down to two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, And basically we use a content sharing um, tool like similar to Google Docs where we just, the states just dump everything in there and then I like work out the plan. And what we use is a shared Google Sheet Mm -hmm. where we have the text and the image and then who we might, Um, push that content to so our audience bases um, and then we also report on that content a month later all the stats of how it went so so when I plan ahead for the next fortnight I actually look backwards and look at what did the best Mm -hmm. in the previous month by check like whether that was the time that it went the time and day that it went what what the content was like um, we find what's really popular for us is stories of actual people. So volunteers, services, and if it actually involves a person, it just absolutely does so much better. That's across the board. Put that in social media planning 101. Like if you can't have a person in it, find a way to put a person in it. Yeah, (laughs) put a person in it for sure. I learned that lesson so hard like this month on the blog because I've been telling people how to do business all this sort of stuff and I really hadn't involved myself much in the storytelling and shared my experiences and stuff like that and it just doesn't work like no one on social media needs one more piece of content that they can't actually relate to yeah it's just pointless it's pointless 
And if you find, I find it if we struggle to get those stories because not all the time people want to give us their permission, yes, correct. we then will do that filler stuff of, you know, lovely, beautiful quotes, but we try to use our imagery with those quotes. Yes, we try absolutely. not to use stock photography too much, yeah. um, which you know, we still do have to use a fair bit. Um, oh, but I find... I'm going to interrupt again. I read a thing the other day that was like, it was a study into Instagram and how they're performing on there. And this is a lifestyle website, very similar to mine, but more focused on graphic design or and interior design and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she was saying that if they go anything above 40% like stock image, that yeah. their engagement just crashes out. And yeah, see, like, that's interesting. Oh, shit, I've been so busy that I've used a lot of stock and even some of my stuff that I've taken kind of looks stocky because I'm yeah. not in it or yeah. someone's not in it. And it's just kind of like, oh, that mm. explains a lot. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, it's super interesting. I think um, people can tell, like, yeah. Because imagery is such a big part of our social media use now, people a hundred percent tell when that image yeah. is, yeah, stock when, or, yeah. or fake. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not to stop people, I think as part of your planning, you should definitely be generating a lot of like images and content like that. But there's a very different like step between something like that style shoot that I've done before and a stock looking image. So yeah. even though they can tell now that those images are like 12 months old, they're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, sweetie, we've seen these. Like it's it's enough. Um, for the first 12 months, they've performed really well. So I think if you do like start to create an image library and start to build up images that are your own content, I think that's so important. And just keeping an eye that they don't end up like generic looking. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, I find um, when we do go to stock imagery, we try and make sure the colours in that stock at least match our brand colours where possible. And that usually then at least helps create some kind of seamlessness with the colours that we're using. Absolutely. Yeah, so while it is stock stock image, it has our colours, so it feels a little less stock imagey, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah well, that's yeah. the 40% that you can get away with, isn't it? Like the yeah. less than 40%. But, exactly. yeah, the stuff that fits with your brand and really. And I think not a people don't give enough time to considering what imagery they're going to be including with their social media. I think yeah. a lot of people stress about what they're going to post but it's more of a like, what are we going to talk about? How do I talk about stuff? If you have a really great image, it'll write its own caption. Oh, for sure. I think I spend half my time finding the perfect image versus writing the text to go with it. I spend a lot of time finding the perfect image. And I think that's definitely something you have to factor into your planning is the time you might spend to find that stock image and don't underestimate how much how time it will take yeah it's so long I have a folder so in my Dropbox where and it's got it's stock is what it's called mm. and each of the businesses that I do any work ever for have yeah. a file because if I come across something that might work for them one day I just put it in the file because yeah it takes so long when you're looking for something yeah mm. you can spend I could easily spend an hour or more looking for the right photo. Oh, easy. Yeah, absolutely. Such a time suck. And I think having that that stock folder is good because we try, I would say, one-third to a half of our content is kind of stuff that has happened, so Mm -hmm. an event or a story, and then two-thirds to a half is stuff that we roll out all the time, like volunteer appreciation posts, shops posts. They don't have to be about anything specific, but we've got this huge bank of photos of our shops and I just have to put a, like, text over the top to say, you know, um, find your second chance at Vinnie's or something, yeah. something like kind of silly like yeah. that. Um, and that helps fill in those gaps where we don't have the stories of say this volunteer turned 90 this week. Yeah. Like people love, I love the 90 year olds. They're the best. The people best. love them. People love them. It's so beautiful. 
<laughs> oh, for sure. That's yeah. such good stuff. Yeah. Mm. But I think having that um, breakdown of what you might like, so how many you think should be organic stories versus yes. general stuff. Like I think about fin fibres as well and trying to balance general stock images like product images I have versus me making stuff versus maybe other people's stuff. If you know that division of what you want, then already you know, okay, I'm going to do three posts this week. One has to be a product, one has to be making it, and one has to be someone else's inspiration. And then you've already chunked it down to start um, putting that together. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, I think that's vital to social media planning is knowing what posts are performing well for you, having that information available to you. I think if someone's really trying to figure that out for themselves, the only way that you can do that is take a look at what you've been doing. And if you yeah. haven't been doing anything or nothing you're doing is working, then start doing stuff and yeah. use that. Start mixing it up. Yeah. yeah. And see what does well. Yeah. I um, I do a bit of um, scheduling and planning for a Facebook page for a company. And the majority of the people there, they get that it has to be personal. Like they're in a service-based business. I want to hear about them, what they're doing, all that sort of stuff. But it's difficult because it's a habit that you have to get into and train people into. And now every time that one of those posts goes up, it goes off. Yeah, awesome. And so now it's kind of like, well, I hate to say I told you so, but (laughs) I did, (laughs) you know. (laughs) So it's kind of like once you start to see that ball rolling, it'll become Mm. really clear what your, like, prime content is, like what that A+. Stuff is like on Sugar Coat it, it's stuff about me. Big surprise mm-hmm. since it started as a personal blog. Yeah. Um, and then after that, people love a good meme. Um, yeah, and quote, meme is like fantastic. Memes yeah. more than quotes, which yeah. again, if you couldn't pick my favorite thing out of memes or quotes, like I love those <laughs> things. So it makes sense. So I know that as much as I'm sending out content about what is on the blog or on the YouTube channel and telling people about the new content, I know it's important to be sharing what I'm doing and what um, and what I'm finding funny, like what I'm yeah. finding on the internet that's hilarious. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really important to track that because while yeah. those things might perform really well now and if you become complacent and don't track it, yeah. in six months' time when all of your reach tanks, you might then kind of go, how did that happen? Yeah. rather than tracking it and going, oh, okay, so volunteers maybe aren't that interesting anymore. It's moved away from yeah, we've volunteer them. stories. To, yeah, we've flogged the <laughs> yeah. crap out of the volunteer <laughs> stories. So, yeah, no, and then enough. you might, yeah, and then you could maybe go, okay, the volunteer stuff is tanking, let's do that half as often yeah. and insert something else that might be Absolutely. doing a lot better. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, quotes used to be a really great performer for me, like the motivational stuff and the things that people, you know, really sort of get you G'd up a bit. But I think there's too much of it online now and people are like, yeah, nice quote. But yeah, not. it's very rare I see a unique quote anymore. They're all like mm. my Angelou or, you know, yeah, like there's all the same ones and you kind of think, okay, I've seen that quote. Yep, it looks yeah. nice the way you've done it. But, yeah, I think unless you use your own quotes, like if you come up with your own sugar sugar quotes, that that's going to do better. <laughs> They'd all, I couldn't post any of them on Facebook because they'd be too sweary. <laughs> but, no, I know what you mean because I know I've quoted Gary Vee a lot, but it's because I'm – in the middle of that book and consuming a lot of his content but yeah yeah, he does that on his instagram they take a quote out of whatever the episode for that day is and it Mm -hmm. gets made into an image and yeah i think because the thing we all need to remember is whether you're working for a big business or a small one you really are building a personal brand yeah you know it's built around people and personality and, Mm. and yeah 
I mean, maybe not so much in Vinny's case because you can't be like, hey, this is this dude. And that even applies to, well, it doesn't apply to Vinny's because we don't have the one person. But yeah. if you think about Fred Hollows, yeah. everything around Fred yeah. Hollows is Fred and yeah. what he stood for and what he said. And they can just use an image of Fred Hollows and so much trust comes with that image yeah. automatically because we know him. I mean, I think younger generations actually, this will get harder for them as younger generations don't know who Fred Hollows is and I think yeah for small businesses and um you know individual businesses it's important that you build that trust with you so that every time you use an image of you all this trust comes along with it with what you're saying or what you're sharing Yeah, yeah absolutely when you come to actually sit down and plan it you don't actually have to be like this is exactly what I'm going to say that day but I know that by Tuesday next week, I need to have some sort of reference to life for me and what yeah. that looks like and what I've been doing and and that sort of stuff. So it, I would recommend most small businesses stick to that two-week schedule like you were mm. talking about. Um, like you said, because within a month it can get quite stale. Um, yeah. A lot of the, the ones that are delivering more emails and like – Facebook and Instagram content, I'm usually meeting with them weekly at the moment just Mm -hmm. because it changes so quickly. So quickly, yeah. So quickly. Absolutely. And that's another place to get ideas for your um, your content schedule is looking at your emails that are going out and all those other channels yeah. as to where you can reuse that content so you're not having to spend as much time creating a new piece but absolutely. reusing it across everything and how you might change it just yeah. to translate better. Well, absolutely. Like Leave Home Blog this week, most of the stuff scheduled is around two posts that were written last week, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's like vote for your favourite appliance and vote for the appliance that you chuck in the bin. Um, Yeah. You know, because we did a post based around those ideas, like ones you need and ones you don't need, a few shopping links, that sort of thing. That's one of the shares. The other share looks more like a Pinterest image, which Mm -hmm. I'm finding, like for all Facebook's words about saying they don't really like to spread word posts, I'm finding yeah. they're starting to perform a little better. So well, that's good. Yeah. Well, for some of them, like I find I can feed the Pinterest-shaped image into Facebook and because it takes up so much room on mobile, especially with our audience who are sort of 25 mm-hmm. as a middle range, not even that, like 18 to 25, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh I'm not even our demographic anymore. But they're on their mobile and it takes up that yeah. size graphic, takes up a lot of space so that works. Mm. So it's just about knowing, okay, well, this is the content that we've spent all this time creating. How do we then utilise it to offer people value off the blog and on these platforms? Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's another good point, like the the photo shoots. So thinking about yeah. how often do you need to have styled shoots so that you've got, say, three months worth of photos mm-hmm. or particularly with um, product photography, yeah. spending one whole day every three months to do all your product photography ready to yeah. schedule in is so much more valuable than trying yeah. to do an hour every fortnight. Absolutely. And you just can't get there. Sorry, my light's chucking around all sorts of... I'm trying not to move, but the sky's moving as well. <laughs> Hang on, I'm super... With my blog, I would love to be doing at least quarterly, half annually sort of styled shoots. Uh, Leave Home Blog, that's our aim too. Some mm-hmm. of the work that I do for in fashion, so obviously they have quarterly like releases, so new season releases, but month by month we're looking at new content yeah. In terms of um, campaign imagery, um, mm-hmm. you know, e-com images, all that sort of stuff because it's amazing how quickly an audience becomes immune to an image mm. or even the same style of image, if that makes sense. So yeah. if we use the same model shot on the same day for anything longer than sort of two months, it starts to like get really stale. Yeah. And people just don't click on it because they're like, oh, I've seen it. Like, yeah. Everyone who was supposed to have seen it has seen it. So, yeah. Yeah. You've got to keep that in mind. Like, how, when do you start to see those, um, 
those interactions drop off and when do you mm. start to see people not react in the same way that they were before that's how I know for sure that those images with me and the gray hair are done is because yeah. people are no longer really reacting to them it's mm -hmm. just become something else that they can scroll past you know yeah mm. yeah Time for that's a definitely yeah, that's definitely a really good tip because I find it's the same with product imagery. You want to be able to style that product in different scenarios yeah. so it's different every time it comes up and yeah. give someone a different idea of how to use that. Same with the clothing. It would be a different model so you can see it on a different yeah. person and yeah. get different ideas of how you might then use that piece of clothing to convince someone to buy it. Yeah, and it's just about doing that and I think – that's it's a lot of the reason why the planning has to go into the imagery and like the video and all that side of things it's just because um it forms such a huge part of getting that attention that yeah. no one will even be reading the caption if the images aren't grabbing the attention if the video isn't grabbing the attention so yeah I think when it comes to planning you definitely need to be like okay well what have we got access to what are the new products mm -hmm. what are the new images what have we got from ecom what mm -hmm. have we got like that's shot in a more casual way you know what yeah. have we got that's detail orientated all that sort yeah. of stuff and then start looking at your schedule and thinking okay well I know that I want to do more of the lifestyle content than ecom okay well I need twice as much of that as ecom I have mm. you know I have five pieces of ecom I need 10 pieces of lifestyle content like okay, we need a whole shoot sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's when that's your sort of macro planning in mm -hmm. sense of, okay, how often am, am I going to book in a photo shoot or how often am I going to spend a day just shooting my product or my office or my whatever I'm doing? Um, yeah. How often are you going to do that and how often – you know, do you need to do that? And then you start to come back to that fortnightly scheduling out. What are we actually saying? What's important to the audience right now? And mm -hmm. what's important to us right now? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that feeds into thinking about what your call to action needs to be yeah. in terms of are you selling every post or do you need a post that's just going to boost your Facebook engagement, yeah. like commenting or tagging or sharing yeah. and having an even balance because you don't You can't want be selling to... all the time. No, no. And like very was... little of the time really. Yeah. And there was that um there's this, you know, report that's done every year about digital in Australia and who's at the top. Yeah. And the number one was Shopo, oh, yeah. which is, yeah, and they are actually really, really good at their memes <laughs> and their funny quotes. They and do all a quite of cute, um, their ads on YouTube are all skit related. Yeah, which so it does really well on YouTube. It does so people well. Love the fun of it. Yeah. Yeah, and I've noticed that um I while I've never shopped at Shopo, I know the name. Yeah. Because Same. people are constantly tagging me in it or it pops up in my feed because someone I know has been tagged in it and yeah. it's really interesting that they've built a brand that I know even though I've never shopped there. And it's and it's in common. And quickly place. and really quickly for the type yeah. of um but that's because Facebook and Instagram is so undervalued. Like the cost yeah. of advertising, if you wanted to launch a brand like Wish or Shein or, you know, Shopo and those sort of ones, then mm. you put 100% of your marketing budget online. Yeah. And creates, and by that I mean you also need to be spending the money to create content that is yeah. engaging and entertaining and good across, you know, generic old good. And then you just drop your money behind it and watch the sales and the brand awareness just happen. Just go amazing, like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and yeah. you don't need to have the big budgets. Like no. Shopo Out did Qantas, and you think about the budget Qantas would have to work yeah. with, yeah. and Shopo smashed them. They smashed all the major cars. They smashed all the major banks, and you yeah. just think to do that, they definitely wouldn't have a huge budget, but it's all in that content yeah. and they know their audience and they're probably um, tracking and testing and refining yeah. each round that they go, which is something for people to really think about.
Yeah, I feel like that should give people a really good basis to think about, like go away, think about how much, how, mm. what their schedule wants to look like. Do you want to do it every week, every two weeks, every four weeks? Yeah. We would definitely recommend every two, thinking yeah. about the balance of those posts, how many are, depending on what it is you're promoting, product-related versus inspirational versus whatever else, personal, whatever yeah. else you might put in there. Um and yeah, just taking away all those key points we've talked about and mm. how they might put that into their routine yeah. of creating content and planning. Yeah. yeah. The takeaway is have that like macro plan, have the overall plan like Shopo have. Like we're going to yeah. dominate, we're going to do that by generating great content targeted at our audience. Okay, what do we need to do every month, fortnight, week to deliver on that? And yeah, yeah, and I think no matter what size your business, um, you'll never be at a disadvantage by continuing to create content and great content. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I know people get really caught up doing business, but this is how businesses are marketed in 2018. Yeah. So I think it's something you've got to take seriously. Yeah. yeah, and really plan and really put time aside to do. Yeah, and make it happen. Definitely. Yeah. And that, I think that's right. That's an episode. <laughs> and that could be a new record for season three. I think we managed to bring that in under 30 minutes. I think we did well. By the time yeah. I chop some out. <laughs> I'd love to see people share with us what they're currently doing. Yes. And from this, if they might tweak a few things, um, yeah. I think it'd be great to hear from people. I'd love to hear about that. You know, this is on YouTube. It's on SoundCloud. It's on iTunes. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram. Like, just reach out and ask us. We're happy to answer any questions we can. And if we can help you get started planning, then... We're happy to do it. Absolutely. It'll probably be me because Samara's pretty busy for the next couple of months. So, yeah, <laughs> if you hear from me and not her, that's just because she's trying to run a whole, like, major thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm barely getting any sleep, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. For today's show notes, you can visit our website, www.sugarandink.com. You can also send us in any questions or topics you would like us to cover at hello at sugarandink.com. You can connect with us on social media using at sugarcoated and at blondinkaus.